And when I look at Brazil historically, I look familiar to a lot of people. When I look at Australia historically, I look familiar to a lot of people there. So I don't have to do, you know, DNA and blood tests to find out what specific area I'm from. I know at one point this was allegedly identified as Pangaea, which is one land mass. And before it broke up, we traveled out from that central location identified today as Africa and moved throughout the world. And, and that represented the foundation of, you know, allegedly all peoples today. And that's just one philosophy, um, one thought process as that relates to how it happened. So ultimately, again, when I think of freedom, I have to go, always go back to um, removing ourselves from this equality thing and fighting for equality and also needing to celebrate the first black. Any, any time we celebrate the first black, we confirm that white people are our standard. That's just, those two things can't, they, they exist together all, all times. If I celebrate the first black, white people are my standard. I don't know, can anybody see that any other way? Anybody? Because, okay, so I think, um, so when I think of freedom, that's what I think about. I think about understanding reality when, no matter what it is, where we are. It could be the forest, it could be outer space, it could be America. We can use this approach on our jobs. How does this reality work? So many of us get jacked up on our jobs because we get taken out of our purpose for being there. How does this reality work? What do I want from it? How do I make this reality serve me? And if that reality is not serving you, have the courage to make a move. Because you ain't going to go in somebody else's house and make it get adjusted for your presence. Even if you have certain rights, even if we have certain rights, at the end of the day, we're going to lose in somebody else's house. You can't nobody just come in your house and kick their shoes off and rub their toes together and go in the refrigerator. It's just not happening just doesn't work like that. So when, when we realize it's not working, we got to have the courage to make a move and make it happen for ourselves and not try to keep forcing the world to adjust to what we need and to our comforts and to what, what we desire reality to be. So that's, that's where I am on the, on the whole uh, freedom thing. And I'm not condemning the civil rights movement. I'm understanding it because I have the ability to look back and learn from it and assess what they got, what they did that makes sense and, and what they did that didn't make sense. And how can we move from there? Because we can't fight the constant reinforcement that that's what was best for us because we don't control it. But we can't understand it for ourselves and, and make moves that make sense. Anybody else? Now, I have another question for y'all. In this climate of conflict and confrontation, what do you think about young people being introduced to conscious conversations, to, um, to this approach to having an interaction? Um, high school students, college students, young people. What, what do y'all think about it? I'm just going to say in advance that I'm going to listen on this one because the experience that I've had with these millennials, as far as them having any consciousness, I am <laughs> going to listen to what everybody else has to say. Because <laughs> I don't... I, whew, these millennials are just a whole nother entity. It's like a whole nother spirit that just doesn't, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree, doesn't exist anymore. I like, these millennials are totally, I have no clue how to connect with them. Um, so I'm gonna listen to what everybody else have to say about consciously getting their minds to be open enough to receive 
how to have a conscious conversation. And I don't work in the school system, so for those who do. As a public school teacher, we have to be very careful what we say and what we tell children. Um, I have been a third grade teacher for 20 years, and that's where I start. I start with my third grade students, and I am from the inner cities of Patterson, New Jersey. Love, 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 love my city. I love my reality, and I am who I am, and no one can change me. And I tell my students, when we turn on a YouTube video, you don't see us on there. You see a white teacher with white kids, and they're sitting there. So I said, when these people come in to tape us, let's show them what we can do. They're telling us that we can't read, we can't learn, that we are the scum of the earth. So let's show them who we really are. So when this company came in to take my classroom, had the worst of the worst kids, and someone said to me, well, what did you do to bribe them to sit quietly? I don't bribe my children. These are my children in my city. All my kids are my children. That's how, I don't say my students, they're my children. And when we looked back at the video and I went back and I told my kids, I said, listen, they thought I gave you candy or something to sit you. They don't believe that we can sit quietly, no. So I think it starts with us, those of us who are in the school system, where we have to take a stand and teach our children that they are something special because they don't know that. They really don't know that. And shame on us, and I put me in that category, for not being the person that does that. But I think that's where it starts, where they have to learn it from someone. And they have to learn it from someone that looks like them. Someone that they see walking the streets of their city. Someone whose family is there. I used to throw parties at my house for my kids. And I was told, you can't bring them to your house. You don't have parties. Yes, we do. We have parties. We have barbecues. We have cookouts. And they're going to come. And their, their parents are going to come with their brown bags because we are a family. And I want them to know that I am no different from them. If I can do it, you can do it. My niece was shot dead. My brother was shot in the head. My sister had nine kids. She was a crackhead. My daughter is a transgender. I am who you are. I'm no different than you. I just went to school and I got an education and I deal with my reality. And I thank you for being that type of teacher. I did have those teachers, and, and you're right, and you remind me of Ms. Brown. <laughs> I just want to ask you to understand more about where you're at, because you said, I'm going to listen, because I feel like the millennials are really just an entity all of their own. And do you believe there's no hope for the young people of today, that they are so ingrained in maybe social media, for example? I'm just throwing that out there that they can't be, they can't see things differently? No, I don't believe there is no hope. I do believe there is hope, but I can, I'm a huge um, experience. I can only go based on what I've been um, exposed to. And so I have to venture out to different um, events or venues to, to see a different type of millennial that has the mindset to strive for greater. Um, but if I don't take myself out of the norm and look outside of my immediate environment, the millennials that I'm exposed to, um, they're, they're not there mentally. And so I'm, I will say I'm fortunate because I had teachers like this woman right here, Miss um, Brown, or my math teacher, um, you know, or my uh, English teacher. And they were black females or black men. And they cared about the students. We 
I still remember, and I, I love math and science and biology and chemistry, so I'm, a, I'm more of a numbers person. Um, but I remember.